Hey y'all, so it's time to dewinterize. We're gonna undo all the antifreeze that is in the system, which all you really need to do is turn the valves. Let's go inside and do that real quick. And I'll show you where everything hooks up at. Follow me around the camper. A lot of times, depending on where you get your camper, they will show you or at least walk you through verbally how to do this. Um, but I've heard that sometimes Camping World will make you pay for it, pay for the walkthrough. So we're kind of going to give you yeah, the tour. <laughs> so we took out the anode uh, for wintertime. I put it back in just so we could get it up here to um, Love's because I don't have a clean out at my house. Uh, Love's is 10 bucks to use their clean their dump service the rv dump is what they're calling it i'm gonna call it the pump out place because that sounds a lot less poop but anyway um so i went ahead and put this back in that's all it needs to go in it looks like it is rotten all the way out there's a tiny bit left of it but it's still good enough for the season so i might change it next year we'll see if we don't have heat for the year we'll see about it then but otherwise i think it's fine tighten it down so it's good to go it's not gonna leak well we've only had this uh, camper for less than a year and only used it three or four months but the, the whole purpose of that rod is to be sacrificial because electricity runs through water and eats up the weakest metal in a tap that it's sitting in so that rod is to be the weakest metal it's made out of zinc so that it's what rots not your system so that's why it's there for it. And that's why it rots. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, yep, yeah, we're. So we're a little back bit in. We have, yeah, it's a mess right now. So the first thing I'm doing is going in underneath here. We've already had, I've had this off all winter long because there was no sense in it. Um, this is winterized. Sorry. Yeah, that, that was winterized. This is, you now have the water heater attached again. So right. pointing to the little styrofoam yep. thing? When is... the, the direction, this means, hey, now the water heater is on. No water heater, water heater. That's It just bypasses the water heater and runs straight through the whole way. So it's now on water heater. That's good to go for non-winterized. And the other option, or the other, not option, the other thing underneath the bed. Now again, we've had this open all winter long because I knew that I was going to come back and dewinterize it after this winter. You pull this off, and inside here, I don't know if Jamie can get in there, you have the same thing in there. Now I can't reach in there to touch it. That one is on if you turn it to the other way towards this blue line it actually comes to this hose and that's where you're sucking out of instead of your water in so when you bypass that that little valve needs to be not pointed towards the open-ended hose it needs to be pointed the other direction that and way. be sure to watch our winterizing because that might also help fill in some gaps yeah to know which way to turn what knobs right so those are on, it is closed in, it's ready to fill up with water again. It already kind of has, well, I've already taken out the pink stuff because I wanted to make sure that everything was good before I threw a video on it. But the pink stuff is gonna stay in even though everything's open and not going the right direction just cause that stuff doesn't expand in the winter when it freezes, it's anti-freeze. So it goes a lot colder before it expands so that it doesn't bust pipes it stays in there to keep all moisture out to keep anything that would expand out now that it's summertime we just flush it through that's it so so we just run on. it until it's not pink anymore yeah, right hook water up to it and run it into the tanks and we're at the the dump so that we can just go ahead and clean out the tanks too so it's a, it's a dump from here forward once you've done that we're just emptying the tanks and for personal ex um or yeah personal experience um run the water even if it's not pink still um run it until you don't smell the smell yeah 
Because we were brushing our teeth <laughs> with antifreeze the first couple months we had the snapper. Because it, it wasn't pink, but it still had that smell and I didn't know what it was. So yeah, but we're alive. So all is well. Yeah, we survived. And he's just making our hose longer because um, they don't give us a very big hose here at the at the pump at the loves. Now, so you can also pour some in your tank if you put antifreeze in your tank. You really should do that and fill it up. Um, again, I've already done that, um, but I haven't really fully flushed this part out. So there's water in the tank, and now we're hooking it up to the city connection. Um, before you hook it up to here, fill your tank up, run your pump. Yeah, fill the tank up, come back inside. <laughs> Sorry. Again, we are not professionals at videos, <laughs> so we do a lot of back and forth then. But we just let y'all know that we're keeping it real and we're not doing this to make money. We're just doing this so people know how to use their camper. So, water in the tank, kick it on. You'll hear it kick on. It's not on right now because it's actually full of water. Turn your water on on your sink. And again, normally that would be pink, but he's already done yeah. that, but it's foamy. So it actually still does have some of the residue in it. Yeah. But also, you have air bubbles because the hot water tank, it's not a hot water heater because hot water doesn't need heating, <laughs> cold water does. <laughs> but your water tank, your hot water tank, your water heater will have a whole bunch of air in it when you first do this and there will be bubbles and it will a lot and spit and sputter. And obviously you all can't smell through video, but just from over here, I smell the yeah, smell that I was smells, talking about. Yeah, it's a sweet smell, antifreeze is sweet smelling yeah it doesn't stink i don't know why it needs to be for sweet smelling because that is enticing enticing to <laughs> animals and that's how dogs we had a dog that got into some antifreeze growing up and it didn't make it so okay no sad stuff here yeah but uh this antifreeze is supposedly not that tight it's still sweet smelling but you shouldn't drink it anyway well, obviously we're fine if we brush our teeth with it but so it's running through the tank right now I'm going to go switch it to city water because that's there's no paint coming through the, the, the off-site tank, basically, if you're going... The one that he told you to fill up yeah, before. But you use that tank for um, boondocking it. You, you're not hooked up anywhere. You fill it up and you get somewhere and you use what you got and what you're done, you leave. That's that tank. That's what we filled up first. That's what the pump runs through. Now that we're going back to city water, I'll shut the pump off, go turn the water on to the hose that's attached, and we will just run it and empty the empty the uh, tanks out as we're doing. So turn the water on. Now, one thing I have forgotten is having a pressure. Um, a, uh, oh yeah, pressure regulator. Pressure That's regulator, on our other yeah. hose. Um, it, it needs to be on there because you never know how much pressure you're going to put and you can pop pipes. So I'm doing this wrong. Don't do what I do. Do as I say. Put your pressure regulator on. Okay. Alright, back inside. The water to the city is on. Obviously there's some air bubbles that's going to happen with that. Um, we don't need the pump on with the water from the city, the pressure coming in is already pressurized. That is just to pressurize the tank to pull it in. It's not pressurizing the tank, it's just pumping the water from the tank. Um, but there is a whole lot less bubbles. I mean, there is some still, especially since I kicked on the, the hot, but there's a lot less from, from the cold side. So we're now at the point of cleaning out the soap, the bubbles, it's not soap, the antifreeze from the hot side, which is also in the tank. You can smell the antifreeze in it. Um, 
but not just from here. You need to run it until it's no longer coming out of that one. You need to flush the toilet until it's no longer pink and foamy and um, smells like antifreeze through that. This is this should be the furthest away um, water line, so it should be the one that takes the most water out, and it should have the most amount of water going to it. Um, I do it with the shower too. I do it in the toilet because I can see it better. And it's not as much to clean up, but turning the hot and the cold on, obviously there's still some in there since you see the bubbles. Yours may not always bubble, so just, you know, keep running it until you feel it is, you're not smelling antifreeze, you think it's just water is coming through, and at that point, you're, you're safe to go. And we don't drink the water anyway, but some people do. Some people trust it enough to actually Yeah, you can get a filter for it. it. We have a filter, I just didn't put it on for this instance. Even with the filter, I don't drink it. Yeah. And even if I cook, I use bottled water, or I make sure that I boil everything before I use it. I drank from a hose growing up, and I was fine. I did too. You did not. You're a liar. So, I think at this point we are, I mean, we're close enough. I'm also filling up the tanks so that they are good and soaked, and I'm gonna leave a whole bunch of water on that gasket there so that it doesn't dry up. Doesn't dry up because it, it actually did dry up over the winter time. It kept leaking water under and through it because we kept forgetting to come out and check on it. So now that we have water in it again, I'm going to constantly be making sure this thing stays full of water. Yeah, because we just don't want it to dry rot, because if it dry rots, then That's it's not gonna me. hold yeah. it's not gonna hold water like it's work for to. me or for some of you it's work for camper camping world or somewhere that you don't really want to take it and spend the money on. I don't want to put my hands in the toilet and work on it, but I do that for a living anyway. So, so you get the gist of just running it until there's no more antifreeze, or at least until you feel there's no more antifreeze. Yep. And then you empty the tanks. It's just a regular dump from there. We have a video of that. If um, if you want to find it. Uh, we'll try and link it. I'll see if I can do that. We'll, we'll learn how to do that with YouTube. We'll link that <laughs> that in the description or in here, here, somewhere in, somewhere in the video. Sure, why not? <laughs> I see other people do that in their videos. Maybe we can do it. We'll give it a shot. Um, next one, hopefully we'll, uh, I'll get up on the roof and show you what you're looking at to know that it's not going to leak. So, and again, this is my first camper. This isn't like I jumped in here and just knew how to do all this stuff. I had to learn it. And this is where I'm, I'm a year in. So I'm, I'm giving you what I had to figure out on my own. Yes, there are a lot of YouTube videos out there, but everything is different for everybody. And I catch on quicker than most people. Maybe not, but I have ADHD. I have to learn somehow. So. And you're full of yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.